The Last Holiday Concert, Chapter 9, Detention. Palmer Intermediate, Miss Hood speaking, will you please hold a moment? It was a little before three o'clock. The hallways had gotten quiet, but the office was still jumping. Moms and dads had come to drop off notes or pick up kids, and a steady stream of teachers rushed in and out. The nurse went bustling through with a girl who had skinned her knee, and the school secretary was trying to help everyone while she juggled three phone calls. Hart trudged up to the counter and waited. Putting one hand over the telephone mouthpiece, the secretary raised her eyebrows. Yes? Hart whispered, um, I'm here for detention. Mrs. Hood shook her head. Talk louder, dear. Detention, said Hart, his face turning pink. I have to serve a detention. She pushed a clipboard and a pen toward him. After Hart had written his name and the time, Mrs. Hood pointed toward the bench with one long red fingernail. Hart sat down and dug a novel out of his backpack, flipped it open to his bookmark, leaned against the wall, and began to read. The noisy office and the school with all its clocks disappeared. The moment Carson knew something was wrong, it was already too late. First came a muffled explosion, then the screech of tires. The small car bucked and shuddered as he fought to get it back under control. The left fender scraped the tunnel wall and sparks splashed the windshield, almost blinding him. Too fast, too fast! But the brake pedal had turned to mush. Carson struggled against the steering wheel, struggled to keep the car from veering into an oncoming truck. It was no use. As if a giant hand had taken hold, well, it's Mr. Evans. Hart looked up from his book and blinked. Mr. Minor stood there in front of him, smiling. You seem very relaxed. I thought I'd find you madly preparing for your big concert. With so much responsibility hanging over my head, I usually get pretty anxious, all tied up in knots. But this year, I think I'm really going to enjoy the holidays. Mr. Minor turned away and walked over to a wall of teacher mailboxes. He pulled a stack of papers out of his cubbyhole, and as he rifled through them, he began humming, Frosty the Snowman. Hart tried to get back into his book, but Mr. Minor's humming was distracting, annoying too, and the guy was taking his time at the mailboxes, carefully looking over every piece of mail, every memo, every note. Finally, the music teacher turned to go, and as he started out the door, he smiled at Hart and said, I'm looking forward to chorus tomorrow. It was the combination of the smile and Mr. Minert's tone of voice. It reminded Hart of his sister Sarah, and that little comment made him feel just feel like he had just been poked in the ribs. Hart suddenly felt brave, which can be dangerous for a kid serving detention in the office. He smiled back at Mr. Minert and said, Chorus? Oh, you mean free period. I'm looking forward to free period, too. Mr. Minert stopped. He came over and stood in front of Hart. That free period business? That's not a good idea, Hart. Still feeling much too brave, Hart said, Well, me being the chorus director, that's not a good idea either. Someone else should do it. Hart paused a second and then said, You should do it. You're the real director. Mr. Minor suddenly liked the way this conversation was going. He said, How about this? If you can convince the class tomorrow that I should be in charge again, then we'll get back to work. Just tell everybody that the job is too big for a kid to handle. That should do it. Of course, they might still want chorus to be a free period, but that's your problem. Fair enough? Hart nodded. Sure. It sounded like an easy way out. He said, that's what I'll do. All right, then, said Mr. Minor. See you tomorrow. And he left the office. As Mr. Minor walked away, Hart could hear him whistling a melody, deck the halls with boughs of holly. La 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 la, la 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 la. Hart felt relieved, but not quite as jolly as Mr. Minor did. Hart still had plenty of detention left. He tucked his book away, rested his elbow on his knees, and put his chin in his hands. He sat there looking down at the green and brown speckles of the office carpet, thinking and thinking. And the more he thought, the more he liked the idea of Mr. Minor taking charge of the concert again. Any other solution would just lead to trouble. Probably more detentions, too. But the feeling that he'd been poked in the ribs wouldn't go away. It almost felt like Mr. Minor had tricked him. But how? Hart couldn't figure it out. The idea that everything would just go back to normal in chorus, that part of the deal seemed fine. Better than fine. Wonderful. Hart knew he did not want to be in charge of this concert, or any concert, ever. No way. He wanted to hide in the back row of the chorus and mumble through the songs like he always did. And all he had to do was stand up in class tomorrow and tell everyone that organizing the concert was impossible, and then ask Mr. Minor to take charge again. 
Not so bad. He knew he could do that, and he knew he could get the class to go along, too. But something didn't feel quite right to Hart. His thoughts went round and round. Thinking back to the class period, Hart remembered what had happened after he said Colleen or Rush should be the director. Mr. Minor had said, they weren't elected, you were. Hart thought about that, about being elected. He had been elected, and without asking anybody for a single vote. How come the kids elected me? Because I'm popular, that's how come. Hart had always known he was pretty popular, but this election, that proved it. And that made him feel good. Then Hart thought it was also sort of a joke. Everyone thought it would be funny if I was the chorus director, especially after that rubber band business. They thought it would be funny. Hart smiled and nodded. It was funny. Then Hart sat up straight on the bench in the office, sat up so fast that he almost banged his head against the wall. Mr. Minert, he thinks it's funny too, me being the director, and me standing up tomorrow and saying, I can't do it. He thinks that'll be the funniest part of all. I'm squirming and he's having a blast. He's going to be laughing the whole time. Hart sat on the bench staring straight ahead, nodding slowly, his eyes bright. The look on his face was so intense that when Mrs. Hood glanced at him, she stood up and said, Hart, are you all right? Surprised, Hart looked at her blankly for a second. Me? he asked. Mrs. Hood said, yes, are you okay? Hart nodded, and with a crooked little smile, he said, I'm just fine. Chapter 10, Brilliance. On Friday, Mr. Minert called the chorus to order as usual. He took attendance as usual. Then he said, Hart, it's all yours. Right away, Tim Miller chirped, yippee, free period. Before a lot more cheering could break out, Hart stood up and said, hold it, everybody. Listen a minute, listen. It got completely quiet. The sudden silence surprised Hart almost as much as it surprised Mr. Minert. Hart froze for a second or two, and his face started to get red, but he gulped and said, I, I know that me, you know, me getting elected and everything, I know it was sort of a joke, and it's pretty funny. Tim Miller wagged his head and went, ha, 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 exaggerating a big laugh. The rest of the kids laughed too, but when Hart raised his hands, everyone got quiet. Again, Hart was amazed by how quickly the kids quieted down for him. And again, so was Mr. Minert. Hart said, it's funny and all, but the concert's really going to happen. Like, we've really got to stand up in the auditorium in front of everybody for a long time and, and do something. Hey, said Tim, I can dance, look. And he jumped up out of his chair and started swinging his hips and waving his arms around. Hart grinned and nodded, and then he said, yeah, but can you do that all by yourself up on the stage for half an hour? And with your grandma watching? That got a big laugh, and Tim took a bow and sat down. Hart said, so I started thinking last night. And I don't think we better have any free periods, because making a concert happen, it won't be easy. Tim and a few of his pals said, hey, no fair. Yeah, no fair. But most of the kids were listening to Hart and nodding, right there with him. Mr. Minert was listening, too. This was the part he'd been waiting for. Hart said, so I've got a question for Mr. Minert, a very important question. Mr. Minert stood up and faced Hart. The music teacher was careful to keep his face under control, to keep his expression neutral. He didn't want to appear too happy about being asked to be the director again, and he wanted to be able to look surprised when Hart asked him. Hart cleared his throat. The room went still as a comic strip. Hart said, I want to know, Mr. Minert, because you know how you said we could do anything for our part of the big concert? Mr. Minert nodded, and Hart went on. So what I want to know is, if the chorus as part of the concert went on for more than 30 minutes, will we get in trouble? Because I've got a tons of great ideas about cool stuff we could do, but I don't know if it can all fit into just half an hour. Before Mr. Minor could open his mouth, Ed Kenner called out, What kind of stuff, Hart? Yeah, said Colleen. Do you mean like costumes and decorations like snowflakes or stars? Because I've been thinking about the concert, too. Hart nodded, grabbing a clipboard from his backpack. Yeah, lots of costumes and stuff like drum solos and maybe karaoke with the audience and maybe somebody could dress up like Elvis in a Santa suit. Me, yelled Tim, me, I can be a perfect Elvis. And he got up and started dancing again. Jenna waved both hands. Heart, heart, at home we've got these two dreidel costumes my aunt made. Like you spin around in them and you get all dizzy and fall down, but it's okay because they're made of this soft rubber stuff. They're really funny. We use them, do you think? Sure, sounds great, said Heart. There's a ton of stuff we could do. The room began buzzing and six or seven other kids were trying to get Hart's attention. But he held up his hand and turned back to Mr. Minert. Again, it got quiet, and Hart said, 
So what do you think, Mr. Minor? Can our part of the concert go a little longer? Mr. Minor was having trouble with his face. It would not behave. His mouth was smiling, almost smiling, but not his eyes. No smile there at all. His voice wasn't much better. He growled, Well, it's not good to go on too long. But everybody's coming to see us, right? asked Hart, like you said. Mr. Minor nodded slightly. So, said Hart, it ought to be okay as long as we don't go way too long, right? Mr. Minor's face was in big trouble now. No smile at all. Yes, I guess so. Great, said Hart. He turned back to the class. Now, we've really got to get serious, okay? So, Colleen, could you be sort of like stage director? I know you could do a really great job. Colleen smiled and nodded, and Hart said, And could you maybe get some kids together and come up with ideas about decorations and costumes, too? Because we can do whatever we want. It doesn't have to look like a regular old concert. And then we can all talk about the ideas on Monday. And does anybody have one of those karaoke computer programs? Anne and Lee raised their hands. Hart nodded and said, Great. Over the weekend, you should both look at them and see if there are any Christmas-type songs, because that could be really fun. And listen, everybody listen. We should probably sing some regular concert songs, too, because, you know, like, we're the chorus. So everyone should make a list of some songs that might be good, and then we can write them all on the board on Monday and decide which ones to sing. And if anyone wants to sing a solo, that'd be great, but no one has to. Now, how many kids here know how to play an instrument? Completely ignored, Mr. Minor walked over and sat down at his desk. He tried to act like he wasn't interested, but he was. He also tried to act like his feelings weren't hurt, but they were. And he was still having plenty of trouble with his face. But more than that, his mind was spinning. He could not believe what he had just seen. Four minutes. It had taken Hart Evans only four minutes to get the whole group excited about working together. And not only that, Everyone had practically cheered about doing more than they had to do. Watching out of the corner of his eye, Mr. Minor saw Hart hurry over to Ross, heard Hart use a good loud voice as he said, Hey, do you think you could be in charge of organizing all the music on Monday? Can I count on you? Ross smiled and nodded, excited, honored that Hart would give him such an important job. Brilliant. The word jumped into Mr. Minor's mind. The kids already got Colleen and Ross working for him. Brilliant, and he's even got Tim Miller focused. Still wacky, but focused. Amazing. As if to prove the point, Tim ran over to Mr. Minor's desk, panting and bobbing from side to side. Mr. Minor, Mr. Minor, you know that thing Elvis does when he sings? You know, like with his upper lip? Is it sort of like, like this? And Tim pushed his face into a sneer. Mr. Minor smiled and nodded. Almost. Rent an Elvis movie this weekend. Maybe Blue Hawaii. You'll get it. Cool, said Tim, and he spun off into orbit again, playing an air guitar. Over the next 35 minutes, the music room did not plunge into chaos. Instead, small groups formed up, some sitting on the floor, some around the tables down front, and some of the desks pulled into the corners. There was a lot of loud talking, a lot of moving around, some arguing and shouting, laughing too. There was plenty of noise, but most of it had a purpose. And whenever Mr. Minor glanced up, there was Hart, in the thick of it all, walking from cluster to cluster with his clipboard, making notes, making jokes, making friends, pulling the whole chorus together, and smiling. Because Hart Evans was not having any trouble with his face. No trouble at all. <laughs>